You're listening to 834's award-winning podcast, The Happy Hour Hustle. We offer listeners the chance to experience the musings, or ramblings, depending on how many glasses of wine she's had, of the one and only Kimberly J. Bodie as she interviews notable clients, upstanding community members, and random passerby. Nominations and awards pending. Welcome back for another edition of The Happy Hour Hustle. Uh, this is Kim. I think you had Caden last week or the last episode, so I apologize for that because I know I'm much more fun. Um, this week, we're going to be talking about logo design, um, and we are chatting with our creative lead, Chelsea Miller. Hi, Chelsea. Hi. Welcome. Thanks. It was really hard to book you for the spot. <laughs> I know. I'm glad you can make some available time. So, yes, thank you. Um, so before we get started, um, what is your favorite drink? Um, my favorite drink is a Masia Mule. It's on my business card. Oh, nice, nice. Mm-hmm. Whose idea? Yep. Was, was that your idea to put those on a business card? I don't even remember. No, but oh, well, you should have just. It said was yes, a reason that I wanted to work here <laughs> because I thought it was oh, so fantastic. cool. Fantastic. Um, I think I'm gonna have to change my drink on there. But all right. Anyway, Why? Before, you're still a red wine with ice cream. I know, girl. but I've been I've been more of a vodka girl lately. Like, yeah. Also, you know, the new year, it's lower fat with um, <laughs> apparently water, vodka water with a splash of lime. If anybody's yeah. wondering. Yeah. And if you get the Tito's, yeah. gluten free. Tito, Tito's, and they give <laughs> some of the money back to the dogs. So that's really. Oh yeah, that's love really, that. It, love it, that about them. Yeah. <laughs> that um that makes my drinking okay. So. All right, so a little bit, we want to talk about great logo design or the anatomy of a great logo. Anatomy. Yeah, that makes it sound sound fancier. (laughs) Okay, so there's a couple things that, um, that, that, you know, a couple things that we really embody here when we're going through the design process with our clients. So maybe talk about some of the key things. Um, You know, you kind of had it bullet pointed before we we started chatting. So, like, what's one of the the top pieces of tips or advice you have? Um, Yeah, I think there's, like, four major tips that we kind of go by while we're brainstorming it. um, And to make it so that it's always going to have a long shelf life and kind of be timeless. So the first thing is keeping it simple. Um, I think it's really important to stick to minimum amounts of... um, fonts and colors just to keep it simple. You can still make it look interesting without having a whole bunch of fonts and colors. Um, You can play with font weights and things like that to make it a little bit more appealing to the eye. So when you're talking simple, do you see like a lot of logos or kind of is the trend going away from like icons? Because I think for a long time people wanted to have some sort of image or or so- something that went along with like their, their brand name. Yeah, I think it's, I think a lot of people are going that simplistic route, but I do feel like it's important to include at least some sort of graphic element that leans into what exactly you do. You want it to be known what you do, that's the face of your company. That's the first thing that they're going to look at. So it's really important to kind of get your point across with that. It's basically a first first impression when you look at it. So so not be too abstract because I think sometimes... Yeah, I think so. I yeah. think sometimes it can get a little too abstract and that's where you kind of cross the line. Well, you do want it to kind of show what you do. Yeah. So, All right, what's the next one? Um, The next one is being unique, so thinking outside the box. I think we do a really good job um, here at 834 with that, Um, kind of thinking out of the box, not doing something that's already been done, especially for a well-established brand. If you do something that someone else has done, no one's going to know who you are. They're going to immediately relate it to someone else who has already done it. Yeah, and I think you see sometimes you'll look at a logo and it'll remind you of sometimes a larger brand or like a well-established brand you know, company that, you know, and then, yeah, yeah. for sure. Um, so I think one of the things too, when we talk about logo design and we talk about these tips is what goes into the process prior before we even begin design is an actual strategy session with our clients. So we can really better understand their company culture, what's important to them. Um, what are the, you know, really what's the feel and tone that they want to get across. And then a lot of times messaging and tagline come out of that. And then if we're even looking beyond that, um, you know, besides just a, maybe a brand or a rebrand or or logo design, sometimes it, it, the name can change during that process. Yeah, for sure. And I think it's really important to know, especially with us being so integrated, that everyone kind of works together. Um, yeah, I am doing the creative part of it, but 
with the strategy and everything like that, it all kind of comes together um, and helps with me and my ideas um, and everything linking together. Not only is it just the logo, but it'll link with everything else that we're doing for you. Well, and I think too, like even if you are just going to an agency to do um, you know, you, you want your logo refreshed or, or a, a total overhaul or a brand new identity, um, it is important that that agency or designer that you're working with really truly understands all the applications and where that logo is going to be used. So is how's it going to work within social media? How's it going to work within email? How's it going to work within print? I mean, it, you you have to be able that logo has to be able tra to transcend like multiple different you know usage yeah yeah that actually leads into my third um, little tip that we use is um, making it timeless and versatile so you want your, like I said earlier, you want your logo to have a long shelf life. You don't want to use really trendy fonts or um, trendy colors that are just going to go out of style in a few years, especially when you're putting in time and money to redesign it. You want it um, to have a long life and to be able to use it in all different types of applications. Do you have people ask for a certain color a lot? Um, I think so. I think especially if it's, we do a lot of the refreshing of yeah. brands and I think it is important if you do have a logo and you are already an established company, I think it's important to kind of keep that history alive where, where it kind of brought you to where you are now um, and just modernizing it a, a bit to help make it timeless. I think that's really important, um, especially if people already recognize you. And I really like this last kind of tip. And I don't even think these are tips. I think they're just like, this should be your motto going through like, you know, the rebrand or, or a logo design. Um, and I really do like this one. And you, you, you said kind of your last one was stay authentic. Yeah. What do you mean by that? Um, I think it, and this also, I kind of got it from you with how, whenever you talk about personal branding, um, because I think it, it kind of goes hand in hand, like, this is the face of your company. You want it to stand out. You want it to show what you do and what your morals are and everything like that. So um, you really want the logo to have that look and feel of what you're going for and who you are. So I think it's really important to really step back and, okay, what do we do as a company? What are our goals and our ideals? And really boil that into one visual. And that's hard to do. And we, yeah, definitely. We, you know, you get, there's a lot of emotion, I think, that are that's involved in the process, too. Um, you know, I know when we went through the rebrand for 834, um, you know, I knew that the logo needed to actually represent where we were as a company, but there was a lot of history tied to that, you know, former brand. So it was very hard for me to step back and, and you know, be... To, to step even away from kind of the history and look at, okay, like we got to look at the future and, you know, and I think it helped having other people around the table that, you know, could, could kind of hold my hand through the process, but it, it does yeah. become a very no, emotional it, it's journey definitely, for some people. It's definitely really emotional because it brings up things that you think about and like the, the life of the company and where it's come and where it is now. And, um, I think it's really important to choose someone that will, lead you through into the right direction. Um, and also going back to our redesign for the A34 logo, I think it was really cool that we did keep some of the, like the color palette, mm -hmm. we kept the color palette. Um, and I think that helps with people recognizing your brand as well. Yeah, and you'll you'll always you'll always deal with um, you know when you go through the rebrand is the community has to get used to the, either that new name or identity too. So I think it's important for people to understand that the brand rollout is almost just as important as the brand design. Um, all right, now the now the fun stuff. Yay! Okay, <laughs> this is the um, the the fast question round. That's called something, but I can't remember what it is. Okay, favorite rapid thing about fire? your Yes, rapid fire. That's oh, what I was looking for. I was not debriefed yeah. by this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but you also got the questions before, which most people oh, do okay, not. Good, just good. I thought these were yeah. different no, questions. No, they're not. Nope, you're fine. Yes. Favorite okay. thing about your job? Um, the dogs. Awesome. Oh, does this have to be quick answers or can I expand on that? Or uh, I'll let you expand. I'll do do dogs. dogs. Okay, good. Dogs good. Um, and being able to get up and walk around. Nice, yes. <laughs> um, do you have a favorite logo that you've designed? Um, okay, you're going to kill me, but I, I don't have a favorite one, but I do want to say that I love being able to be involved with logo design because they're all so different. And that's yeah. why I don't have a favorite is because 
everyone has their own unique story. And I think that's what I love about it is no logo that I've ever designed in the history of me being a designer has looked the same, even remotely the same, which is crazy to me because it's been a lot. And right. And it's hard not to pull. That's No, that's awesome. I'm not going to kill you for that answer. Okay, that's a good thanks. Answer. <laughs> okay, what is one thing you wish people knew about the design process? Um, I think just definitely like the time that goes into it, not only just designing, but um, everything before, all of the brainstorm and research that we go through, um, the sketching, everything that goes into it, it's not just designing something on a computer and calling it quits. There's lots of trial and error, um, and I think it's important to know the work that goes behind it. Um, yeah. Because then at, that really does kind of build the foundation for the logo, too. So. Yeah, and I mean, even like exporting a file takes time, so you always have to keep that into consideration, especially with time management. So. Right. What's a misconception people have about designers? Um, I think... If you design something in Canva once, you are not a designer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's good. That's very good. All right. Now, this is my favorite question. If you had to choose a color palette that represented you, what would it be? Um, yeah, I was thinking about this one, and I couldn't decide whether to go. We talked about this the other day in the office. I couldn't decide whether to go colorful or more neutral, but I got to say my favorite color is gray, so I think I would do a nice calming blend of grays, 50 nice. shades of gray. Oh, oh, wow, never going there. <laughs> this just became a, from a G to a rated R podcast. Who knew? Um, okay, so, uh, oh. and Chelsea, if for anybody who's um, just tuning in or, or forgot because this podcast ran long, is our, our creative lead at 834. Um, and you can, you know, we post lots of stuff on social media so you can get to know our team, but um, there will be a blog follow-up or there is a blog that supports this too so you can read yep. more in depth. But thanks everybody for listening to another edition of Happy Hour Hustle. Thanks, Kim.